What's going on guys, Tone Pepperone, back booking another episode of GSW, The Road to Global. Now before we get into today's episode, just want to remind everyone, if you're not subscribed, click that subscribe button. We're here every week with The Road to Global, and make sure you hit that notifications button so you never miss another episode. Now with all that being said boys, let's get into today's episode. We don't have a lot of time until GSW tax season, we're already at the night of the show, it is tonight. So let's get moving towards the show boys. Alright, we're at GSW tax season. Let's set our broadcaster, MSG. We've got some locker room incidents. Take a look at this. Kasayashi entertained the locker room by organizing a poker tournament. Got a little bit of uh, APA flashbacks going on here with Kaz Hayashi. Of course, this episode, we're going back to the Tri-State. Got to make our money in the Tri-State. Pick our best venue. And now that we got all that taken care of, boys, let's start the show. Starting off the show, we have Doug Williams versus Road Dog. An extremely short pre-show match. Road Dog beats Doug Williams in 5-1 by pinfall, the pump handle slam. Doug Williams had a 40, Road Dog had a 43. We also have Doug Williams improving his performance skills. Then in our next pre-show match, we have the Headbangers versus the Dudleys. In a pre-show match that had subpar wrestling and little heat, the Dudleys beat the Headbangers in 742 when Bubba beats Mosh by pinfall with a powerbomb. Thresher was the weak link. Thrasher had a 14, Mosh had a 24, Bubba had a 45, Devon had a 48. We also have Mosh improving his rumble skills and Devon improving his rumble skills. Then, starting off the main show, first matchup, we have the new Stevie taking on Aguila. In a match that decent wrestling and little heat, Aguila beat the new Stevie in 757 by pinfall. Aguila's new gimmick of a degenerate got rated great, new Stevie had a 44, Aguila had a 40 in his first match, it's pretty goddamn good. Then up next, we have Bill Mulkey versus the New Budokan versus Psychosis. In a decent match, Psychosis beats Bill Mulkey and the New Budokan in 10-11 when Psychosis beats the New Budokan by pinfall the guillotine leg drop. Psychosis wins the GSW Tri-State title, and Bill Mulkey didn't even get pinned. Bill Mulkey had a 58, the New Budokan had a 50, Psychosis had a 61. Really good number from Psychosis. Then up next, we have Glacier teaming up with Low Supers to take on Guido and the American Males. In a decent match, Guido and the American Males actually beat Glacier and Low Supers in 955 when Guido beat Super Callow by submission with the Sicilian Crab. Scotty Riggs was the weak link. Kendo had a 64, Callow had a 67, Glacier had a 66, Guido had a 63, Scotty Riggs had a 36, man, that is terrible. And we had Bagwell getting a 49. Good number for Marcus Bagwell. Then up next, we have Too Cool versus the Pitbulls. In a decent match, the Pitbulls beat Too Cool in 936 when Gary Wolf beats Brian Christopher by pinfall the powerbomb. The Pitbulls win the GSW Tag Team Championship titles. Brian Christopher carried the match in terms of in-ring performance. Scott Taylor had a 52, Brian Christopher had a 69, Gary Wolf had a 54, Durante had a 56. Pretty decent match overall. We also have Durante improving technical skills and performance skills, and we have Scott Taylor improving his performance skills. Up next, we have Jerry Lynn versus Davy Boy Smith. In a match that's superb wrestling great heat, Davy Boy Smith beats Jerry Lynn in 1337 by pinfall to running power slam. Jerry Lynn had a 64, Davy Boy Smith had an 82. Really good performance out of Davy. Up next, we have Paul Heyman and Chris Candido backstage, and Paul Heyman says, You know what, Rob Van Dam? You've always been a deadweight piece of shit holding my client Chris Candido back, but last week you went too far. Last week, you cost Chris Candido the GSW National Championship. You cost me and Chris Candido a lot of money, and when you start costing us a lot of money, that's when you cross the line from dead weight to dead man. Then Chris Candido says, Rob, Paul is absolutely right. This thing between us has become way too personal. I don't want to just beat you in a match anymore. I want to end your fucking career. That's why at the next show, I challenge you to a false count anywhere match. Because I don't want to just beat your ass in the ring. I'm going to beat your pussy ass all over this arena. Paul Heyman did a masterful job of improvising interactions with the crowd. Chris Candido clearly enjoyed having the freedom to go off script and perform well. Then up next, we have Taz versus Kaz Hayashi. In a match at Good Wrestling, Good Heat, Taz beats Kaz Hayashi in 1548 by submission with the Taz Mission. Paul Ellering did good work at ringside. Taz had a 62. Kaz Hayashi had a 72. Really good number out of Kaz. We also have Kaz Hayashi improving his performance skills. Up next, we have Booker T versus Edge. In a good match, Edge beats Booker T in 1552 by pinfall at the Education. Edge wins the GSW National Championship. Big win for Edge tonight. 
Booker T had a 64. Edge had a 62. Right behind Booker T in performance. Up next, we cut backstage where Lance Storm and Mortis are in the middle of a brawl. And Jim Cornette's yelling for both of them to stop, but they're not listening to Jim. They just continue brawling all over the arena. The brawl eventually makes its way to the lobby of the arena where Mortis has the upper hand and he goes to give Lance Storm another flatliner right on that fucking hard floor. But this time, Lance Storm is ready. He reverses it, grabs Mortis, DDTs him right on that lobby floor. But to the surprise of Lance Storm, Mortis gets right back up. Well, this time Lance Storm is ready. When Mortis stands back up, Lance Storm super kicks Mortis, and Mortis goes flying right through the front window pane of the arena. Breaks the Blue Cross Arena's window with Mortis, puts him right through it. So at this point, Lance Storm, he thinks he's won. He tells Jim, he said, I told you, I wasn't done fighting your fucking boy Mortis, and I just showed him that he's not invincible. So Lance Storm, he's feeling real good right now. He walks off thinking he won the fight. But the camera pans over to that broken window, and all you see is Mortis starting to sit up. And when Jim Cornette sees Mortis getting up after getting put through the arena window, he just says to himself under his breath, man, this guy's not fucking human. And he looks in the direction that Lance Storm went off on, and he says, Lance, this guy's gonna fucking kill you. Good luck, man. Jim Cornette improvised well throughout the segment, and of course the Lance Storm and Mortis storyline has advanced with the segment and gained heat. Yeah, I'd say it gained heat. He just put Mortis through a fucking window. I'd say that's definitely gaining heat. Then up next, after all that crazy shit, we have Al Snow versus Midnight Mike. In a good match, Al Snow beats Midnight Mike in 1631 by pinfall to Snowplow. Midnight Mike was visibly tired towards the end of the match. Al Snow had a 65, Midnight Mike had a 62. Then finally, in our main event, we have Juventud Guerrero taking on Flash Funk. In a match that superb wrestling good heat, Flash Funk beats Juventud Guerrera in 2015 when Hoovy gets himself intentionally disqualified again. Hoovy's had the belt since November last year, and in that time, he's probably cheated to keep this title more times than I can even count. Hoovy had a 73, Flash Funk had a 71. Altogether, it's a really good rated show. We got a 77 to B, and the show increased our popularity yet again in the tri state. Tonight, we're going to make a speech, and we're going to tell Lance Storm, we're going to tell Mortis, and we're going to tell Jim Cornette. Everyone did. We're going to compliment everyone on a good performance because they did well. That segment was fucking crazy and it was impressive. Everyone was pleased. All right, now that the show is over, let's check our emails. Dave Boy Smith is feeling the effects of a grueling recent schedule and has asked that you take that into account when booking him. So we're going to have to take it easy on Davey Boy for the next week or two. GSW Tax Season got a point fifteen, Same rating we always get. We could delete those. Let's take a look at our decisions. All right. We got Joey Styles we're going to sign. And we're also going to sign D'Lo Brown. Both of those went through. Let's assign these guys to the roster. Yeah, we're going to leave D'Lo Brown as a fun baby face. We'll leave him as a face. We'll leave Joey Styles as a face. Let's auto push the roster. And let's throw Joey Styles on the announcing team. As we do every episode, let's take a look at our size. We're at a 67 in the Tri-State, no change there. So the third in New England, we didn't have any change in New England like we did uh, the month previous where we went from 29 to 30. But I'm sure on the next episode when we head back to New England, we're probably going to hit that 31. As I said in the last episode, we're not going to check the wrestling industry or economy because they're probably still falling. So we'll check back on that in a few episodes. As always, guys, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Hit that notifications bell so you never miss another episode. And I'll catch you guys on the next episode of Road to Global.